Welcome back to Mental Math. Here's an equation that looks perfectly straightforward at first glance. But there's a subtle trap hidden inside. And what makes it interesting is that the trap isn't some weird edge case. It's actually quite elegant once you see it. Before we jump into any algebra, let's think about where things could go wrong. With fractions, the danger zone is always the denominator. So we have this fraction on the left side, and there's a fundamental rule we need to respect. You can never divide by zero, which means the denominator can't be zero. Look at this denominator, x minus 3. For the fraction to make sense, this can't be zero, which tells us something important about x. So x can't equal 3. That's our forbidden value. Whatever we end up getting as a solution, it better not be 3. Keep that in the back of your mind. All right, with that restriction noted, let's look at the numerator. There's a pattern here you might recognize. The numerator is x squared minus 9. This is actually one of those classic patterns, a difference of squares. To make use of this, we can think of 9 as 3 squared. That way, we have something squared minus something else squared. So now we have x squared minus 3 squared, which fits the pattern a squared minus b squared. The difference of squares pattern tells us that a squared minus b squared factors as a minus b times a plus b. It's one of those really useful factoring shortcuts. So applying that pattern here, the numerator becomes x minus 3 times x plus 3. Now notice what happened x minus 3 appears both in the numerator and in the denominator, so we can cancel these out. Well, as long as x isn't 3, which we already said it can't be, we can cancel and get this much simpler equation. x plus 3 equals 6. From here, solving for x is straightforward. We just need to isolate x, subtract 3 from both sides. So we have x equals 6 minus 3, and 6 minus 3 gives us x equals 3. And here's where things get interesting. Remember that restriction we noted at the very beginning? Let's see what happens when we check it. The algebra gave us x equals 3. But we said at the start that x can't equal 3. So we have a contradiction. The only value the algebra gives us is exactly the value we're not allowed to use. That's the trap. If you try plugging 3 back into the original equation, you get 0 divided by 0, which is undefined. So even though the algebra gave us an answer, there's actually no valid solution to this equation. To really see what's going on, Let's look at this graphically. Sometimes the visual picture makes everything click. We're looking for where the graph of our fraction intersects the horizontal line v equals 6. After simplifying, the function is just the line y equals x plus 3, shown here in blue. We want to see where it crosses the green line at y equals 6. But here's the thing. X can't be 3, remember? So there's actually a hole in the blue line right at the point where X equals 3. The function literally doesn't exist at that spot. It looks like the lines should intersect, but because of that hole, there's no actual intersection. No intersection means no solution. The graph confirms what the algebra was telling us all along. This equation has no answer. Thanks for sticking with me through this one. If you found this interesting, hit that like button and subscribe for more. See you next time.